Hello, and welcome to the Audio Epics Podcast. I'm Domain. And I'm Eileen. So, I've got a new Tascam recording device, which I'm holding right now, which my wife gave to me because, as a present. Yeah, because, you know, he's such a great husband. Yeah, and it was Christmas. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting two months... Uh, <laughs> lately for us yeah so before we get into our uh, our episode maybe we should talk about that for a bit when it comes to health issues this <laughs> has been a very very weird start of the year uh, yeah yeah we we both got sick at the turn of the year yeah actually um, on new year's eve yeah i got a fever um yeah turned out to be covid and then I got a... And me too. Yeah. I got sick too. <laughs> we both got sick. And then you got um, you got this bacterial infection on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, it was in my lungs and my, um, my ears. And then I ended up in the hospital. And then I came back. <laughs> and then we thought, phew. Like the Terminator. I just yeah. I came back. Finally, we're all back together and everybody's healthy again. And uh, we went back to work, kids went back to school, and then... Yeah, after the the, the quarantine, of course. Yeah, af so after, still yeah a quarantine after period. the quarantine And then, and then uh, our oldest brought home the flu, you know. Yeah, they, they had yeah. a fever and for then a week. And then we all got sick, all four of us. And now I think, fingers crossed, we're finally yeah. in the clear. <laughs> uh, I didn't suffer as much from the flu, but maybe God gave me a break because you know I, I suffered as much. So yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's been a long time of um, uh, health issues. Um, yeah, but we got yeah. through, and here we are. So today we wanted to have another podcast episode and just you know have a bit of fun talking about uh, movies and, and books and games. Yeah, and, and that's a subject that we've been wanting to deal uh, for quite a long time, mm -hmm. which um, we ended up calling cliches and tropes in storytelling. Yeah, um, so because we went for cliches and tropes because, you know, what, what's cliche and what's a trope? Yeah, maybe we should start with that, uh, explaining yeah. a bit the, the difference between the two of it. Yeah, so we went to dictionary.com <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, uh, for a definition of both. And um, the, the word cliche there is defined as a trite or hackneyed plot, character development, use of color, musical expression, characteristic, etc., Anything that has become trite or commonplace through overuse. Mm. Hackneyed. Like that word. <laughs> and then um, for trope, the definition is something recurring across a genre or type of literature, such as the mad scientist of horror movies or once upon a time as an introduction to fairy tales. Similar to archetype and cliché, but not necessarily pejorative. Yeah, so the idea is that cliché is often much more uh, used as a pejorative. That's one thing, and, and also I think a cliché is anything that's overused, and a trope is more something like that's typical for a specific genre or a specific yeah. uh, type of uh, storytelling. Well, we, we wanted to just have fun, so we kind of mashed... Two of them. Yeah, the sure. Two of them up. Actually, so what we actually ended up doing was we just uh, kind of made a list of uh, cliches and tropes. Yeah. That we like, that we don't like, just things that we came that that came up. First, we um, we were actually browsing TV tropes for inspiration, but we, yeah, the, we the immediately sides, yeah. quit because that that website is really a labyrinth and. It's they true. go a bit overboard with looking for tropes everywhere. It's true, yeah. So um, if you've seen it twice in a the movie, then it's a trope. It, it, a, a everything of, is on there. A lot of what everything. they mention is pretty recognizable, though. But yeah, it's it's too much. It's too. But it's a really fun website to check out, anyway. So yeah, yeah. it's 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 one of those places where you can really uh, go down a wormhole yeah, and waste and, time and lose your mind <laughs> for a number of. Times. <laughs> but but sometimes I mean sometimes I think well this is not really 
but sometimes I do see things there that make me say, yeah, I know, I recognize this. I've seen this in a hundred movies. And and also in The Simpsons, because yeah. everything is in The Simpsons. So uh, so we checked out TV tropes, but in the end we decided to just brainstorm and talk about movies and come up with our own mm -hmm. cliches and tropes. And a lot of people complain about uh, th that something is cliche, for example. Yeah. But... We think that these uh, cliches or tropes are often just the typical ingredients of a genre or medium, and we, we kind of like some of them, so... Yeah, well, I, I, I've said before in previous episodes, I, I like old cliches, I don't like new <laughs> cliches. I guess what I mean by that is you have certain really old cliches that are just kind of charming and fun, and then there are cliches that are more like things that... One one movie does, and then they all start doing it because you know, bandwagon. Phenomenon. Yeah, bandwagon yeah. phenomenon, and and that's what I don't like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I understand what you mean. So yeah, we we were kind of um, we we wanted to categorize this uh, episode in some way, but it was really hard. Uh, you got visual or sound cliches, and uh, you you have. These cliches that don't fit anywhere, the miscellaneous. So yeah, we were, we were at a point where we were just talking about the cliches that we hate and some some of our favorites. Yeah, and it's all very subjective, of course. So sure, we decided oh, absolutely. to just go with the flow here, and yeah. we have like this um, very rudimentary categorization, and yeah. that's it, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what we did. Um... So we had a whole list and then we sort of categorized it in pretty random categories. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we, we will come up with new ones or yeah. forget about some of them. So so this this is not a doctoral presentation. Um. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to win any awards, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. So um, first we have the category comedy, like comedic uh, cliches and tropes, yeah. I suppose. Um, yeah, you want to do the first one? Oh yeah, that's one I really love. There's a lot of movies where you have the situation where this can't possibly get any worse. Yeah, like the, when they say the same line, <laughs> they this say, can't get any worse. They yeah. say the line and then the next uh, scene, it gets worse. Yeah. So for example, bad weather, that's, that's, that's a very cliche one. Oh yeah. And in The Hobbit, it's like when the, the Goblin came... King, they defeated him, and and everything. Uh, they uh, they fall down, and right. then they say this can't possibly get worse. And the Goblin King King falls down, his corpse uh, uh, right, yeah. right on top of them. You've so, got to be joking! Yeah. Also in Peppa Pig, they use a lot of cliches, and they use this uh, often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. Daddy Pig sa says this can't possibly get worse, it gets worse. <laughs> and of course, um, another one is where they ask someone to do something and they go like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> and then cut to the person doing what they <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of a specific scene in a movie, but that's definitely happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I remember one. Um, in um, The Rescuers Down Under, when, uh, <laughs> when the bird, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Uh, Wilbur? I don't know. Or is it the, the other one? The bird. Yeah, it's it's the the nephew. Um he says he will never he will never hatch the eggs of the eagle and then in the next scene he's doing it. So. Right, yeah. Um the the one that's that springs to my mind is in um The Land Before Time where uh, they ask the little dinosaur to um to go to the the big sleeping T-Rex. So, oh, and, and also related is the this or that will never happen when the character says that. Yeah, oh, that will never happens. happen. Yeah. <laughs> then it happens. Yeah. Basically, yeah, I guess the previous two are kind of a version of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's um, a really typical trope. Um, actually, basically what, what happens in, in comedy a lot is just someone says something very with a lot of conviction, yeah. and then the, the opposite happens yeah, right it's, away. Yeah, it's messing with your expectations. Yeah, That's like what, they, what they're saying is disproved right away. Yeah, Exactly. Um, 
And yeah, another thing, and this this is for me sort of in the territory somewhere between between uh, fun and annoying. It it really <laughs> depends on the execution. It yeah. can be very annoying. Is when a character, and this is this is very common in comedy type stuff, is acting very suspiciously and trying to hide something, and then other people. And succeeding. Are completely oblivious to yeah. it. You know, the, like, there's... It's super obvious that they're, you know, that they're lying, that they're hiding something, and they're acting like, uh, oh, uh, nothing, no, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, then ev- and then everyone, you know, acts like right. everything's completely normal, and no one's even the slightest bit suspicious. And it's, it's either information or an object, yeah. but it's always, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so if you would try to do that in a serious movie, it would obviously fall flat because it's oh, there, completely not there's credible. There's a lot of lying and and trying to deceive people in comedy. As well. Yeah, yeah. Because this this reminds me of the trying to combine two events you can't miss in oh, comedy, yeah. uh, or or being in two places at oh, once. Oh yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like the 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 final. Act of Mrs. Doubtfire is all about that, right? Like he's having dinner with the family and uh, yeah, with exactly. his new boss. Yeah, it's like the center of the story. It's uh, it's very commonly used in comedy. Oh yeah, then I was thinking of cliche characters. Um, like a cliche character that comes up a lot in comedy is the pervert best friend or the slut girlfriend. Oh uh, right. Oh yeah. Like every <laughs> American comedy has, yeah, one one of the main character's closest friends at least one of them is is a pervert or a or yeah I'm, a I'm, slut, like I'm always wondering <laughs> why is this his friend why is this his yeah. best friend yeah yeah i guess uh, or, the or entire the entire series of um, how i met your mother is is like that with uh with barney m- with yeah. barney Barney's- being actually he's actually i think he's actually a psychopath i mean the way he treats women um he should be in jail but yeah th- they it's, make it yeah, be- seem charming somehow it's because uh, he's it's, they, so they, well dressed and he's funny <laughs> that 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 makes him get away he's, with it he's he's an evil man but you know a lot of psychopaths are well dressed as well yeah, and yeah. funny so i guess oh yeah and you also have the opportunist uh like the the fat guy in demolition man who wears the the funny clothes right yeah i don't know if if our listeners know that movie so well, um, so maybe you should explain what you, you mean by the opportunity. You should watch it right now. Yeah, yes. um, it's one of our favorite movies, both of us. Demolition Man, starring Sly <laughs> and uh, and Sandy B. <laughs> yeah, and the the, the evil and uh, uh, Wesley Snipes, the evil emperor kind of guy in the movie. He yeah. has a sidekick, and and as as soon as the evil emperor is out of the picture and there's a, a new leader then he immediately immediately turns and offers right. his service to the yeah, next guy right oh yeah yeah so yeah in that sense the opportunist it's usually this sort of um yeah this really subservient use often a shorter guy like played by Danny DeVito maybe oh yeah um, he could do that who's yeah. like you know uh, really sycophantic and he immediately switches allegiance um, as soon yeah, as yeah, yeah. as uh, the balance shifts, yeah. yeah. Also, like his character in in Matilda, perhaps because he never wants to send his daughter to school, but then mm. the headmistress wants to buy a car, and then suddenly she needs to go to school. So he's he's like, yeah, he's the used car salesman. So <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, oh and yeah, also of course. Alfred uh, yeah, Alfred in, in the Hobbit, in, in the Hobbit uh, movies is is like that. You know, uh, when he, you know, he's, he's, um, he licks the boots of the master of Lake Town, and as soon as uh, he's killed by the dragon, and um, Bard becomes the hero, <laughs> yeah. then it's like all hail King Bard. You know? <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't get away with it. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't get away with it, but he tries. The angry boss is another one of the characters in our uh, in our list of uh, comedy. Stock oh characters. yeah, like the over-the-top angry boss. Yeah, <clears throat> I, uh, yeah. The chief editor from the newspaper in Spider-Man is is I think an, uh, a brilliant example. Um, he's also really funny, 
Um, yeah, and his head is probably very red in the comics. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I've never read them, but... Um, Me neither, but I imagine <coughs> very red. But uh, uh, in the movie, the, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, um, I thought that character was, was really uh, funny and well done. Yeah. Oh, the happy villain is also a very nice one. Oh, yeah, so the villain who is... Totally having fun being villainous and, you know, laughing all the time. And yeah, and doing awful stuff uh, in a kind of chill way. Yeah, a great example is, again, from Demolition Man. Yeah, uh, Wesley Simon, Snipes. Simon Phoenix. Simon Phoenix. Uh, yeah, there's this line that he says in the movie in a, in a specific way that he says it, and we kind of, often kind of repeat that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny movie, and it's, it's a funny character. <laughs> Now everyone's going to want to know the line. <laughs> well, well, I'm not going to repeat it. It's, it's, a, fa it's a family show. <laughs> um, Dr. Evil is also, also in a very good mood always. Is he? Yeah. Um... Yeah, kind of. And, and he's even like when he has Mini-Me, he <laughs> thinks he's kind of cute and he's like the... The bright dad all the time, right. while he's actually concocting these evil plans all the time. So, so he's a. Uh, uh, it's kind of it's kind of nice uh, having a villain who's having fun at the job. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, of course, there's the the villain cackle, ha 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 ha. Um, yeah. You know, Gargamel and stuff like that. Um, but that's different. That's like every every cartoon villain does that. Um, yeah, and I believe we we somewhere have a category of the bad guys. Oh, okay. Cliche, so it will, it will, we'll, we'll get back on that. Here's a, uh, another category. So we, we had comedy. Um, sports movies. Sports movies are full of cliches. Yeah, um, but we only wrote down one. So uh, Yeah, we don't watch a lot of sport movies. I'm not even but... sure this should be a category because, you know, a category with only one item is <laughs> but kind I, of a I'm, I'm, I know <laughs> there's a ton of cliches in sports movies. Yeah, um, like there's sports guys in them and shit. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, it's, it's like they're, they're, they tend to be really, really formulaic. Yeah, um, the, the, the one I could come up with was the injury before the finale. It's always when there's a right. There's yeah, they're doing final, really they're doing well, a... and then right before the big game, one of the main characters has an injury. Yeah. Yeah. And then, often, despite the injury, he pushes yeah, himself. Yeah, they do it anyway. They do it anyway. Yeah. They win. In and slow motion. Yeah, in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, that's another cliche. Yeah. A lot of slow motion. Yeah, the sports movies have a lot of slow motion. Yeah. By the way. Um, if you watch more sports movies than we do, then feel free to, uh, yeah. to write all your cliches in the comments. Yeah. I, I, for some reason with we the injury, I'm thinking of some kind of horse race movie, but... Oh, I was thinking of rugby. Oh, okay. Or American football kind right, of Right, yeah. Ba baseball. There's a lot of baseball movies. Oh, yeah. Um, we watched Field of Dreams a while ago, but it's, that's not really about baseball all the time. There's a bit of baseball in it, but it's not. Hmm. It's not like a big game kind of movie. Right, that was that. Um, it was such a weird magic, idea. Realistic yeah, story, it, right? It was like this a, a magic baseball field. Um, it was oh. a weird, weird movie. Hmm. Yeah, um, it was kind of nice, um, but I, I don't remember it that well. Oh, horror cliches. There horror, are a of lot course, of horror, horror is one of the most cliche-ridden genres. Yeah, I immediately have to think about the creepy gas station guy. Of course, yeah. Um, I think that's especially kind of a slasher movie thing. Yeah, and in slasher movies, there's also um, usually deformed uh, psychopaths, like maybe inbreds or um, right because yeah. there was a nuclear attack they they were kind of deformed but in in one way or another they're usually or often deformed people or yeah. like like uh, in the texas chainsaw massacre they have to wear a mask to cover uh, i don't know burned face or scars or something oh, the phantom of the opera something <laughs> deformed um, yeah and, and but yeah, the creepy guy at the gas station is is like one of the, one of the main mm -hmm. stock characters, I guess, in horror. Um, and of course, 
Um, another oh, what's not on this list? Um, but th- it's uh, an older horror movie cliche, but I think it's very much true. When um, when characters have sex, they get killed afterwards. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically, you know, basically they, that that's what it comes down to. That's yeah. the rule. Yeah, and it used to be that the black guy got killed first, right? That was... Yeah, but they've sort of uh, amended that. They, yeah, they, they they will never do that. <laughs> no, they don't. I don't, I don't think, think so. they will do that anymore. Or the drug addict. So the guy on drugs is also usually one of the first ones to die. Or the, it, or really? the, the, no. the, the guy who, who drinks. Um, there was... In the old horror movies, there was always a kind of moral warning yeah I, I think that that's still kind of um, now essential to the genre oh. almost but but yeah they've tried to subvert it so many times that yeah like often it's it's really the opposite nowadays but i don't really watch with the torture porn oh, stuff I, I don't and... i don't watch that kind of stuff i never i never watch it um the only horror that I still watch are, you know, the, the exorcism type movies like The Conjuring and stuff. <laughs> but those, uh, I like them, but they've become a little bit too predictable, maybe. Too much the same. Hmm. Um, so I don't know where you can go for, with horror anymore from here. Um, it's like everything's been done. The old movies? Um, yeah, but if you want to make a new one, I don't really know what you can do anymore. Um, hmm. Someone will have to reinvent the genre to make it fresh again. We've had all, the, we've had the jump scares. We've had the, you know, the, the twist at the end. We've, oh. so it's it's hard to be original anymore. Oh, I'm thinking of one that's not on the list too. Um, that they they do often in in these more more modern uh, horror movies. That uh, creepy guy is just standing in the background, staring. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's creepy. That that's... was in The Strangers. The first time I watched that, I almost got a heart attack. It was so creepy. Yeah, that's an example of something that, you know, it was done in a few movies and it was really effective, but then everyone started doing it and it became just cliche. Yeah. And it lost its power. Oh, um, another thing they do is when they want to establish that there's this creepy small town. That when you arrive in the town, everyone shuts their windows. And <laughs> that's they, that's like, in westerns as well. Really it's not just in horror movies. Awkward and and or spying on you. Yeah, that's, it's in Twin Peaks as well, I believe. Yeah, it's like in in a west when you know a small town is being terrorized by bandits. You yeah. know when 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 the the the, 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 the hero cowboy arrives, then you you, you know he, you can sense the fear in the town. And, yeah. So it's 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 in horror and it's in westerns. They're spying on you from beyond yeah. their shutters and. The first scene of uh, the movie Sleepy Hollow has that. Oh yeah. When he really, arrives. Really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and speaking of spying on someone, that's another cliche. When you're spying uh, on on a creepy guy, that he suddenly is suddenly gone, or oh, clo- right. close by, like in What Lies Beneath. Yeah, she's watching. Uh, she's watching from her own home through binoculars um, into the neighbor's house because she thinks the neighbor is has maybe killed his wife. Yeah. And then. And then suddenly, suddenly she, she watches him go out the 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 front door. Yeah. And then, and then she loses him. He's, he's gone. Yeah. And she notices footprints uh, at her own. Front door. Right, and then suddenly someone's right behind her, and she turns around, <gasps> and it's her husband. Uh, you just got spoiled home. the entire movie. Yeah. No, it, it's in the beginning. Shame on you. It's in the beginning of the movie, or well, not in the beginning, but in the first third. Uh, another uh, horror cliche is the eternal resurrection of the bad guy. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like uh, he's dead. No, no, he's not dead yet. Oh, but now he's dead. Right? No, yeah. he's not dead yet. Oh. Usually, he comes back one last time, you know, and it's he's, you know, he he looks really monstrous, you know, being, having been I don't stabbed buy it. and I don't buy it. When a bad guy dies, uh, when he's full of blood, I don't buy it. I want to see him uh, explode into a thousand pieces, or I won't buy it. Actually, <laughs> I, I think in in the Terminator movies, one and two at least, they they did it really well. Um, 
but it, it was done in a in a different way. It was not like suddenly, ha ha, he jumps out again. It was like um, in the first one, it was like you see you see uh, the tornado in a sea of fire, and you think, oh, he's got to be dead. But then he just comes walking out of the fire as as this metal skeleton. Of course, he's a freaking robot. Yeah, and then in the second one, it's like. Um, they freeze him and they shoot him to pieces, but he's made of liquid metal and it gets really hot and all the drops come together again oh, and he forms no. forms this shape again. So it's it's more like oh it's it's an aspect of the yeah. of the robot that they can do that. So that's different. Oh yeah, and they keep knocking the bad guy unconscious. I mean, I never learned how to knock someone unconscious. Don't <laughs> trust it. And then they just stroll about oh, like, yeah. oh, I solved this. Stroll, oh, yeah. stroll, stroll. Or, or it's like they had some kind of relationship trouble and, and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry and I miss you. And, and then they kiss. And meanwhile, the bad guy's slowly waking up. Uh. <laughs> Often here is very naive. Uh, that's, that's probably the, the one joke in, in Scary Movie that I thought was, was, uh, was still funny. That when offered the choice between a number of objects to defend herself. Uh, there's a gun and there's a crowbar and I don't know what it, what it was. But then she picks the banana. <laughs> and, and then there's this, this arrow that points to certain death and she follows that one ex except, uh, instead of the one to safety. And I think that yeah, was but that, kind uh, of interesting because that's often what happens. The banana is still funny, but then the the second one is not funny anymore. But but it's it way does too it does happen in horror, like the dark alley. What's with the dark alley? I don't understand why heroes keep getting themselves into dark alleys. Why would you pick? Maybe the dark they have alley? to go there for some reason. No, they never. They never need to go there. Yeah. It's even often the case that they they go into a dark alley and then, then they almost die and then they escape and then they just turn back the way they they came in, and you're like, why were you there in the first place? I guess another another thing is about splitting up in horror yeah, movies. Yeah, that's so uh, stupid. Don't do that. Yeah, it, but it's 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 so cliche that they keep doing like, that. Yeah, they, like they know they know it. Like. You, the movie makers know that that's a cliche. Yeah, yeah, or or if if you're in a strange house, they keep touching stuff. Just <laughs> stop touching stuff. It's not your stuff. <laughs> There's bound to be a psychopath behind you or something. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to uh, westerns. Yeah, we already had the the yeah the the small town business. Of course, yeah. Um, the flapping saloon doors, like yeah. Yeah, and sure. And yeah, of course the 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 boots with the spurs, uh, you know, and and you only see boots when the guy walks in. Yeah, close um, up of the feet and the legs, and and then silence. Everyone yeah. shuts up for a moment. And and of course one of the big uh, things that we associate with westerns, many of the things that we associate with westerns as being cliche actually weren't really a part of Westerns for the longest time, but they were introduced by Sergio Leone. Yeah, of course. Like the the close-up of the eyes, followed by this extreme wide shot of vast plain. Hmm. Uh, that's that's Sergio Leone. The straw in the, the mouth. The, 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 the music, like the, 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 the whistling the... music, you know. Oh, the... yeah. That that's all Ennio Morricone. That that wasn't done in, in Westerns before at all. Um, hmm. So throughout the 50s, when Westerns were at their most popular, you know, during the period of John Wayne, etc., <laughs> that wasn't done. It's a spaghetti Western thing. The cowboy songs. And, oh, my, my absolute favorite in Westerns is the tumbleweed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love tumbleweed. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, uh, 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 one of my favorite cliches f when it comes to the bad guy is when he slowly emerges from the shadows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, or turns around in his chair yeah. slowly. Or... Yeah, and when he comes from the shadows, it's often that his shoes are visible first, yeah. and then you see his legs, and then... Usually they, they say something first. You hear their voice. <gasps> yeah. And and then you, you notice, oh, there's somebody there. And then... Ooh, a rough, intimidating voice Ooh, from the shadow. 
Oh, and, and I love it when they stroke a pet, like a cat or something, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. like the the stepmother in Cinderella. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, James Bond villains are always uh, stroking a cat. Sure, and oh, and the growling dog when the dog growls towards oh, the bad guy, and you yeah. immediately know, know this guy is up yeah. to no good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. doggies are so nice, and when they grow, it must be a very bad man. Another thing I really like about villains, usually it is when they emerge from the shadows, <laughs> is the slow clap. You oh, know, yeah, that's one of clap. my absolute favorites. It's like, um, it's like they, come, they come out of the shadows and they're like... <laughs> yeah. But isn't Wonderful that, performance. Isn't that However, you forgot one thing. <laughs> yeah, isn't that at the end when they do the yeah. long monologue and yeah. they explain everything? Yeah. That's another yeah. cliche, right? The long the, monologue. Uh, very touching reunion or something like that, you know. Yeah, but you forgot <laughs> one thing. I was already aware that you blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and while you were, uh, I don't know... Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that's one of the well, one of the best cliches out there, I guess. Um. Yeah, and and um, one thing that they do in comedies, like in the Wedding Singer and music and lyrics both, is that a bad guy, not always a villain, maybe just an ass. Yeah, like an unpleasant yeah, character. Yeah, gets gets your name wrong, especially oh, yeah. the name of the the pleasant character. Yeah. Oh, that is so typical. I love that cliche. Yeah, it like I uh, really love it because it it shows that you you're actually not listening or paying attention to someone. Yeah, yeah. So a, a, an example is um, yeah, like in in the movie The Wedding Singer, which we've mentioned several times on this yeah, podcast. Too often. Um, like Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore's <laughs> character is called Julia, and um, she comes to visit like, Adam Sandler's house, but you know his ex girlfriend is there. And she opens the door. In his Van Halen t-shirt. Yeah. And she says, oh yeah, I'm Julia, could you tell him that I came by? And then she's like, oh yeah, sure, Jennifer. <laughs> and closes the door. So yeah. It, yeah, that's a good cliche. And in music and lyrics is the, the asshole character um, calls Alex Fletcher, Alan. Yeah, like, take care, Alan. Uh, and he says, take care, Alan. So it's I love that cliche. They do it so often, but yeah. I, I love it because in in just one sentence, you know what kind of you know that this person you, is you self-absorbed. They're not interested in other people. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, another cliche is the the cliche of the two bandits with the bad guys. You know. Oh yeah, the, the henchman. Yeah, the, right? the one small fat guy and then the long thin guy. Yeah, yeah. The small fat guy is usually smart, and the and the tall thin guy is usually dumb. Oh, that's that's um, the way in uh, 101 Dalmatians, right? No, that's the other way around. There, there, it's actually really? the, the the yeah the the tall thin guy who is the because no, usually I don't know. usually it's the short guy who is the smart one, and and the tall guy is the dumb one, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's it's in Home Alone. That's the case. Yeah, Home Alone. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Home Alone is a is a perfect example. Uh, I guess in a way, uh, in the Lucky Luke uh, comic books, the uh, the Daltons. Well, there's four of them, but it's yeah. the shortest one who is like the boss, and and he's the smartest. And he's the smartest. And the tallest yeah. is the the the, 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 the small smart one is also the one calling all the shots, and you know, and he's usually yeah. really. Really impatient and angry with the tall. Isn't thing. that Ma Dalton who's actually calling the show? Yeah, true. <laughs> ultimately, yeah. Ultimately, ultimately, all guys just listen to their mom. Ultimately, it's Ma Dalton. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I don't know how well known the Lucky Luke comics are in in the states because uh, I think they're, they're Belgian comics. Are they? Yeah, oh, I but they, uh, they take actually. place in the Wild West. And they contain quite a bit of um, historical elements, actually. There's a lot of historical characters that appear and in, the, in those comic books. And there is an animation series about it. I, yeah. I thought uh, yeah. it was in, in English. I'm not sure. Could be. Could be. The, the whole thing is uh, Lucky Luke is a cowboy and he shoots faster than his own shadow. Um, that's, that's like the main idea behind it. Hmm. Oh, anyway. Looks like we're famous for our comics. With oh yeah, the, yeah. There's there's Tintin, there's Asterix. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, Asterix is French. Um, that's not Belgian. And still people Oh, wait, I think Lucky Luke is French too, because it's from by the same guys. So, no, that that's not one of ours. But the Smurfs are Belgian. The Smurfs are. They actually mention it in the movie. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Um, yeah, we move on to the hero. Yeah, the hero. Oh, there's so many awesome hero cliches. Of course, yeah. Um, maybe, um... Like our favorites. Yeah, yeah, this, like, this is, like, our number one favorite cliche, maybe, is... Walking away from an explosion slowly. Yeah. And preferably wearing sunglasses or putting them on while walking away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And just, you know, really casually, like, not worrying at all that, you know, your back might get burned or something... There's this big, huge orange explosion right behind you and you just walk away like it's, you know, it's it's boring to you. Like, if yeah. you do this every day. You, you know? act <laughs> like you just don't care. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. Oh, another cliche, uh, hero cliche is, I'm not this guy anymore. <laughs> I don't use that name anymore or I oh, don't yeah. do this kind of thing anymore. Like, the hero is obliged to return to his former duty, the, the called out of retirement cliche. Yeah, uh, there's, there was this parody movie, uh, Hot Shots. Uh, there were two, I think. I think it was in the second one hmm. with this Rambo-like character. And, um, I've watched it, but I don't remember. He's, uh, he's in, a, in a Buddhist monastery. And then, you know, they, they arrive with a helicopter and ask him to come out of retirement for one last <laughs> job. And he's like, you know, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> the, yeah. I don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> and uh, I think particularly the action hero has a lot of cliches going on, like strapping on gear and the, yeah. the training montage that we talked about. Yeah. I, I like the strapping, strapping on of the gear. Like, it's all super close uh close-ups you know like you you see a belt you see like yeah. a gun you know the, the a dagger Fancy being boots. put away you know yeah shiny boots yeah, yeah. like um the the close-ups of all the, the gear clicking into place um they did that even in the lord of the rings actually with aragorn yeah uh, before that. the battle of helm's deep when he puts on his uh his battle gear um it's 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 another one that I like. And they should do that because you know Weta put a lot of work in the the designs of the yeah. the shields and swords and, and belts and yeah so yeah definitely they needed to do that. And of course, off. as as you said, the training montage, um, yeah, a, a, another thing that was parodied with a song in the movie, <laughs> uh, yeah, Team America. With each shot you show a little improvement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, usually the, the, the hero still needs to learn some skills to defeat the yeah. big bad guy at the end. And then I need oh, to Oh, uh, I, I guess um, in Mulan, they do that in a song too. Uh, and uh, Be oh, a yeah, Man. Yeah. The, right. Like, she, gets, she slowly gets better, and the other soldiers. Uh, Oh yeah, and and that reminds me of uh, another cliche character, the mentor, uh, the mentor, or, or the the captain, the the, the, the one yeah. who trains the the hero. Yeah. Um. Um. Oh, what I love about action movies is the cool one-liners after the bad guys uh, get killed. Oh and yeah. I think my my favorite one is from Speed, when um, Dennis Hopper says, "I'm smarter than you." Oh yeah, like they're fighting on top of the train. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're f right. There's he's choking him. Yeah. He's, I'm smarter than you, and then the train hits something, and the guy's head falls is off. yeah basically falls off. Uh, his head is chopped off, and then and then Keanu Reeves says, "Yeah, but I'm taller." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was funny. And later, <laughs> when he's reporting uh, to to Annie, uh, played by Sandra Bullock, how he killed uh, the bad guy, he says. He lost his head. <laughs> yeah. What happened to him? He lost his head. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like the you're fired uh, that Schwarzenegger says in True Lies. That's an, you're another fired. famous one. Yeah. Schwarzenegger is good at those kinds of puns and stuff. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they also parody that in the Austin Powers movies. Like, um, 
when one of the henchmen, uh, Austin Powers, uh, pushes one of the henchmen into into lava or something, mm -hmm. and he burns, and he he keeps making these stupid jokes like. I guess his career went up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he keeps joking about it. Yeah. And nobody reacts. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot of famous uh, one-liners like um, by Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon. I'm too old for this shit. Oh, yeah. How many times does he say that? I'm, I think in I'm, every... I'm too old for this In shit. every movie. Yeah. Although I'm not a big fan of the movies, I thought they were a bit overrated. And then there's the, there's this... There's this big over the top uh, saxophone riff in the music, you know, every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and you have Hasta la Vista, baby. Yeah. By Schwarzenegger in Terminator. Yeah. Um, you call that a knife? This is a knife. Oh yeah, yeah. Crocodile Dun Dundee. Yeah. Mm. By by Paul Hogan, and then repeated in Wolf Creek by that psycho character. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, and in in Predator, um, the movie Predator, Schwarzenegger, yeah. he Im basically impales this guy uh, to a wall with his with a big knife, and then he says, "Stick around." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, in in Team America, um, they they kind of made a make a, a parody when Lisa says, "Hey terrorists, terrorize this," <laughs> <laughs> which is yeah. kind of their version of yeah. we're making up a one liner here. <laughs> So, what are other cliches uh, for heroes? Um... Yeah, so like um, here we have one of uh, the the cop as a hero, um, cop movies, um, investigations. Usually, what happens is the the, the main detective um, doesn't work by the book, <laughs> and um, and and he's but he's getting close to solving the case, but then. Uh, the superior. His superior gets mad and he says, like, uh, you're off the case. But then he still goes on and still pursues and, and actually solves it. Yeah. Even though he's he's off the case. That's like right? Fox Mulder on several occasions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I, I saw a parody in The Simpsons. Oh, and in, um, what was that uh, series you bought me? True Detective. Oh, it, that's in there Another too? example, yeah. He, oh, was, okay. he was suspended and he kept on working on the case. Wow, it's like in every detective thing. <laughs> Although it never happens to Columbo. No. No, like, no, no is he... I don't think so. But he's, he's, he's like awesome. this super nice, sweet little guy. So. Who would want to suspend yeah. that guy? Yeah, you, you couldn't. But uh, I, there was a parody in The Simpsons with McBain, who's like this Schwarzenegger parody. Oh, yeah? If you remember. Um, and... Um, and there was a scene in a in a McBain movie where the the the, the yeah, sergeant or whatever the, the his superior gets angry and says McBain you have to work by the book and he holds up this book and then and then McBain shoots the book with a bazooka and he says <laughs> buy book. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that... more like actual guidelines. Anyway. <laughs> Jack Sparrow would say. So, oh, what I also love is the, the the typical tough guy shit, like wearing sunglasses indoors and, and <laughs> flipping a cigarette into a puddle of gasoline. Yeah, that's usually something bad guys do, I yeah. think. Yeah, but... Yeah. I guess, but... Or the hero trying to defeat the bad guy. Yeah, but if 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 it's there's someone, like, ch tied up uh, in a chair in, in the middle of a puddle of mm. gasoline, then, then the bad guy yeah, will, yeah, like... Yeah slowly sort of finish his cigarette oh, and then you're like... you're thinking about Simon Phoenix again, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those of you who haven't watched Demolition Man, you should really watch it. It's it's cheesy, it but... It is the greatest work of art in Western history, I think. And it has Sandy B. Yes, yes, it has Sandy B. I love Sandy and, B. And, and what I like, what I think is funny in that movie is um, uh, our Sandra, Sandra Bullock is always... Trying to say like these tough lines, but she doesn't really know tough guy language because she comes from a time where that doesn't exist yeah. anymore, and she keeps saying them wrong. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really funny. Like she says, "You really matched his meat." Yeah. Stuff like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So um, I guess another cliche, in just a general cliche, that's uh, that's really fun in movies 
is when they want to make something more dramatic, the weather always cooperates to make it dramatic. Yeah. Um, Bad weather, like a storm. Yeah. Oh, especially when uh, it takes place at sea. Or oh, yeah. rumbling in the distance. Usually... Um, Lightning strikes. I think usually the, the rumble... The, the rumble of the thunder in the distance is reserved for, like, emotionally dramatic Yeah, and, the, and the, the lightning is more for suspense, right? Yeah. Oh, it, it reminds me of um, Back to the Future. Mm. Whenever they got, the, like, a suspense and there's a, a time lock, they have yeah. a deadline, then uh, you get uh, <clears throat> bad weather. Of and course, it actually plays a part in the the resolution of the the storyline as well. The the storm. Yeah, yeah. Because they need the lightning. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking of uh, Frankenstein, of course. Uh, oh yeah. Is kind of same thing. They yeah. they need the light the lightning to um, live. Yeah, to make Adam live. Yeah. So let's move away from action and uh, suspense and go to. Romance and friendship. Yeah, because it's been Valentine's Day, so... Recently, yeah. I, I saw a comic book, not a comic book, a cartoon of um, uh, Saint Valentine being teased by other saints in heaven because it was Valentine's Day and they were reading like all the... All the um, Poems? The, yeah, the, the poem and the prayers that people sent to Saint Valentine that were like super corny and. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I think one big cliche in romance uh, is the interrupted kiss. Yeah. Um, of often in superhero movies like Spider Man. Oh yeah. Superman, like they want to kiss and then something comes up usually uh, someone in peril or I think there's a, a very funny one in Star Wars episode 2 Attack of the Clones where um you know Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman are uh, on that patio uh, overlooking the lake right and he he wants to kiss her and the music swells and then like she turns her head and the, like the music abruptly stops and yeah that was very funny <laughs> <laughs> And, da, 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 da. And, that, oh. and then she says, did you turn off the freezer? <laughs> it should have had like a, maybe, that's another cliche. It should have had like a, a, a record scratch, like. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that that should be, that's the last category. I believe the, the cliche sounds should be, oh, okay. should be on there. <laughs> maybe another um, comedic love cliche. I, I don't think it's on the list is like when someone sees someone and it's love at first sight and oh, yeah, you <laughs> and you the see them music. in slow motion and and with like this sort of white <laughs> vignette around it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like that and it's it yeah yeah with the light and everything you you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean I think that's funny. Oh, that that reminds me of the next one. The love and interest passes the incapable or insecure hero who is excited and wants to wave, but then realizes oh, like he she's or she, passing by. Yeah, yeah, is talking to someone more uh, interesting or hot. So she, it's it's like it looks li for a second like she wants to talk to him or her. Uh, oh, that's in Spider Man and too then, in the beginning. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. That's like it looks like, like Mary MJ Jane's is waving at him. And then she's waving at her friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a typical one. <laughs> yeah. And then the two characters hate or dislike each other, but learn to appreciate or even love each other. That's like the plot of 50% of all movies. Yeah, it <laughs> certainly is a plot of 10 things I hate about <clears throat> you. Uh, but in... that, that's Shakespeare, right? That movie. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, The Taming of the Shrew, but then in a... In a Teenagey, corny teenagey movie. Yeah. Um, oh, in Entangled, you have the the dynamic Max and Flynn, which is which is hilarious. They. Um, oh, you mean the horse? The horse the... who who kind of behaves like a dog, and he hates Flynn because he's a criminal. But then they start, yeah, warming up to each yeah, other, yeah, and I then guess, Flynn yeah. kind of better[s] his life. Yeah. And, Oh, and, and in, uh, what's that uh, movie the kids watched the other day? Um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. 
Yeah. There were actually two sets of children who ended up liking each other by the end of the And at first at first they didn't like each other. Yeah, the yeah. the two guys I believe they they ended up liking each other, the little guys and then the the daughter and the the neighbor the guy from uh, I guess, the but I guess it's 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 really a big trope. They in, get a romance. It, it's a big trope in in romance, right? They can't stand each other at first, and then they fall oh, in yeah. love. Oh yeah, is it? Isn't that the the case with the what's that romantic comedy? Called? You've got mail. Yeah, you've got mail. That's, Tom that's, Hanks. Yeah, yeah, that's an example. Yeah, I guess uh, Pride and Prejudice is like that, right? Hmm. Um, I guess so. Yeah. And of course, um, I object. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, you could have a whole thing about courtroom uh, <laughs> cliches, but I, I meant uh, a wedding scene yeah. where someone at the last moment, you know, uh, slams open the church door and yells, I object. Uh, oh, yeah. A funny, funny example of that is in While You Were Sleeping, when she actually objects and then someone comes in, objects to and then someone yells, get in line. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah, like yeah, it was the priest who said, three, get in three line. Three people like, objecting yeah. in the same wedding. But um, there are cliches in fantasy as well, right? Uh, of course. Like the, the, the apprentice. Uh, I mean, the, I, I, I think tropes maybe are it's more the of the ultimate a, genre. Tropes, I think, I think more of a, a suitable word for that. Yeah. You know, the farm boy who turns out to be the chosen one and has to meet a, a, a wizard who is his mentor. Oh, that's very specific. Yeah. It's like Star Wars meets Harry Potter or something. Yeah, or Aragon or <laughs> any one of them, you know. But yeah. It's, um, it's, it's the basic uh, coming-of-age fantasy plot. Yeah. It doesn't bother me as much. I mean, as long as uh, there's an original turn in it or it's not, that's not the whole plot, then it's fine. If it's uh, another thing that that is often in fantasy is like um, you have people. Well, that's that, in urban fantasy. It's like you have people who are special, who have some kind of gift and are part of some kind of special magical world, and other people who are just ordinary people and they're they're muggles. Or um, I remember oh, one yeah. series where where the ordinary people were called the mundanes. <laughs> oh right. Uh, yeah, isn't that the whole um, theme of the the story of Encanto, where the main character is actually the only one who has no special power? And I watched that uh, movie when I was really sick, and I don't know whether it was because I was sick, but I really didn't like it. I thought it was boring, and or it was uh, the impression that I had when I saw it was like it's it's harmless, it's inoffensive, but it's it's just not very. Good. Interesting. Yeah. And and let's face it, people want superpowers. It's it's cool. Sure, but that doesn't mean that every character has to have superpowers. No, but if the main character is the only one without one, yeah, and I think that could work. You make something, uh, yeah. Solving a family problem is like an act of heroism. I just don't buy it. Just I don't know. Feel I, I epic. Maybe it, maybe it just wasn't done. Well, in that movie, I, I mean, I haven't really watched it. I've and only seen bits and pieces. The problem with but... those movies is, like like with Frozen, it was gorgeous. Mm. It looked, it was visually gorgeous. And I think it's so sad when the, when the story is not exciting enough. Mm. If it's such a visually gorgeous movie. But, but actually, but I do think you could have... A, a cool uh, movie where the, everyone's got some kind of power, but the, the main hero does not. I think that could work. Okay, um, let's talk ab uh, about, death. about death. Yeah, because I thought, no, this conversation is getting too lighthearted. <laughs> yeah, too corny. It's, too yeah, so let's talk about yeah. death. Let's go from Valentine's Day <laughs> to Funeral's Day. <laughs> okay, so, no, uh, so we have a category, death. Um, and and taxes. No, tax, <laughs> taxes in movies uh, doesn't come up that much. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking Mitchell Black. Yeah, of course, death and taxes. Um, so one of uh, some of the cliches uh, surrounding death in movies is, of course, that when someone dies, they always take the time. 
to say something really moving or significant, and then they die. Yeah, they go like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then their candle flickers and goes out. Yeah, and another, I uh, guess, something that you've seen in a lot of movies is like, there's, it's always two cops who come to the front door to announce the death of, you know, someone. Yeah. Um, like the parents of the girl in the Playmobil movie. Yeah, to mention a great classic, yes. Um, no, but that's that's the the last, I mean, the most recent one we've watched. But there's a there's a lot of examples. Yeah, of, of that. course. And also the the flickering lights that come through the yeah the door, the, the, the slightly the, the, transparent from the door. red and blue from from yeah. the cop car. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know uh, you already know, right? Yeah, another. I think this this is a good one. Is um, when in a movie there's a character who uh, who coughs and um, and it's it's rather you know they, they they linger on it with the camera then you know oh this person is going to die later on in the movie yeah especially if it's they they they're toast they're gonna die if it's a very long or yeah very severe cough or there's blood on oh, the, yeah. on a on a hanky when they yeah. when they cough and there's blood on a hanky then you you know for sure they're dying yeah um like um, in Moulin Rouge. That's of course, example. if you're Tommy Wiseau, you don't need that kind of cliche because you can just have your character say, I've had the results of the test, but I definitely have breast <laughs> Yeah, cancer. but then they never return to it. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't die in the movie I'm or anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, another, another, it doesn't always have to be a cough. It can also be, but that's usually if it's a male character. Oh. Like their chest hurts and they have to... They have to... <gasps> right! Like, uh, oh, that isn't me, Joe Black. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, just hurts. It's true, it's and then, true. And then, you know, okay, yeah, he's going to have a heart attack later on. He's the scenes die. I remember when when there was someone coughing blood, it was often, uh, it was often a woman. I don't know why. Maybe it was a thing that there was a, a time in history when women died of bloody, bloody coughing disease a lot <laughs> or something heart attacks are in movies very much a, a, a guy thing apparently hmm. it's always guys who die of heart attacks never women yeah um, and when there's a scene when when a bad guy or something might have killed someone or when someone might have died I mean, you're not you're not, not quite sure then usually they cut to your funeral in the rain and then you know <laughs> for sure yeah oh uh, he didn't oh yeah that's yeah, too yeah. bad and usually it's outside in the cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. And and everyone has... All the people have not only black clothes, but they have black umbrellas. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> where do they keep finding these? Yeah. These black umbrellas. And I've never been able to find a black umbrella in the store. It's always these colorful <laughs> things. Yeah. But then at the funeral, everyone has the same black umbrella. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a ton... Some more uh, death-related oh, cliches, which gets us to the not very credible cliches. But oh yeah, sometimes they might as well be fun. Yeah, number one on our list of not very credible cliches is when <laughs> I think this is a good one because it's so <laughs> typical and it kind of annoys me that they always do this. <laughs> when someone has a nightmare in a movie, they always wake up like <gasps> veering up in their bed. Sitting up straight, panting, covered in sweat. Yeah. Like, <gasps> you know. Yeah, exactly. It's it's to this extent that it does. I don't even notice it anymore if someone yeah. wakes up from a nightmare in a movie. Only when they do it differently. Yeah. When it's more subtle, then it strikes me as, hey, they didn't do the cliche. <laughs> yeah. It's it's. Um, when have you ever woken up like that from a nightmare? Never. It's it's <laughs> something that I I I really dis kind of dislike because. They do it every time like that, and it's just not how people have nightmares. And some people... I've uh, never had a nightmare like that. No. Some movies do it more subtly, and mm. it works too. It's clear that the person had a nightmare. I remember, I think it was the movie Apollo 13, where um, the wife of the astronaut has a nightmare about her husband dying in, in space. And she wakes up and it's done with just, you see, just see her eye opening and you see like a big eye and, uh, and that's it, you know, no, one, one eye. Yeah. Just one eye. Wow. That's open. And, and just, no, no, no veering up and, and sweat and, you know, 
And does she do... <gasps> that I don't really remember. Because <laughs> um. that's usually what they do, too. Oh, uh, another one that's not very credible is that shooting a lock open with a gun that usually works right away. Yeah, but I, that's one I do like. I want to see it, a cop try it, like, in <laughs> real life. But isn't it more something for, like, a pirate movie or something? Um, yeah, those, those more, typical more old locks. More yeah. kind of padlocks. We, we don't you know? have those padlocks yeah. anymore. It's true. Um, yeah, this is one that does bother me a bit, because... It's it's also it's super cliche and it, it's just not credible at all. It it happens a lot in like Chuck Norris type movies. You oh know? yeah, yeah. So there's a good guy, a Jackie Chan movie. Yeah, and he's surrounded by bad guys. And so what do they do? The bad guys, they take him on one by one, you know, like or or maybe two at a time. Yeah. But always, not more than he can handle. <laughs> 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 so he always takes them out one by one or two by two and then moves on to the next uh, pair that attacks him. Uh, <laughs> oh, but this uh, suddenly reminds me of when you don't do that, mm -hmm. like when you would have all these people surrounding the hero, mm -hmm. when you uh, have them attack all at the same time, mm -hmm. you get what they often do in animation movies, that the, the hero can escape from... Underneath a pile uh, of <laughs> villains all, that are actually... All fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. On, on one big pile fighting each other. Yeah. Or maybe what you could do in like an anime or something, if, if, if the hero is like super powerful, is like there's this compressed mass of guys on piling up on top of the, the good guy and then suddenly there's like this big explosion and they all fly away and he sort of emerges from mm. the center. That rings um, a bell. I think they did that somewhere. Yeah, I, I've seen that. I've definitely seen that. I think in, in, in an something? anime or... Yeah. Probably, yeah. Or maybe The Matrix. Uh, that's the kind of thing where they might do that. Um, I have, I've only seen the first Matrix. But isn't there like a scene where there are like a thousand Mr. Smiths all fighting Neo and... I don't remember. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've watched that movie. Uh, yeah, I've only seen the first one. So I, it might have been in one of the others... Uh, We've got the two sequels, too. I know, I know. Um, but we don't have time to watch them, because we need to finish uh, our next I, I've never, I never really feel... I always... After the first one, I always feel like, yeah, yeah that's enough. I don't know, it's just... Well, it, sequels I think, are I think it's a cool concept, the idea of the Matrix, like, oh, okay, so the world is, is a virtual reality. But, you know, I, I always feel like, okay, I've seen that now, and, and I, I'm really not interested in where yeah. you take the concept next. Like, how could you possibly make this more exciting? Yeah, it's yeah. like, eh, <laughs> for me. Um, yeah, another cliche. Uh, right after a crime is committed, you can already hear the sirens in the distance, even though nobody called the cops. Or yet, <laughs> right. nobody called oh, the cops. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, in the room at the end... <laughs> Yeah. Someone, uh, spoiler alert, uh, kills himself. It's not really tragic. It, it yeah. was and then supposed they, to be and tragic. And then they find him lying on the floor in with uh, his brains yeah. blown out. And, it just and then they go, is he dead? <laughs> yeah. And it just happens and you hear the sirens in the distance. Yeah. It's probably a coincidence. Yeah. Probably for someone else. Yeah, maybe. For something yeah. else. But it's, it's strange. It, knowing Tommy Wiseau... He probably put it in because those sirens were actually meant for, for Tommy, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, uh, for Johnny. Very often also what, what happens in, um, in thrillers and stuff is like uh, the, the, the main character um, has to fight off this horrible um, villain and killer. And, you know, after a long and terrible struggle, when finally, you know, they, they get rid of, of the bad guy and the bad guy's dead, then the cops arrive. <laughs> yeah. It's always after the fact. Yeah, but nobody called them. Except for in Home Alone, where the kid actually calls the cops. Yes, yes, that's true. But even then, the cops arrive too late. They, they, they never actually do anything. Yeah. Another cliché... That's not very credible, but it, it's it's suspenseful, I think. There's not mm -hmm. really a way around it. Is that after reanimation, 
uh, you get a long flat line or no pulse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly either water comes out of the lungs if, if, it, if someone yeah. was drowning or yeah. the monitor starts beeping again. You have to right. <laughs> you always have to wait for a while. At that. And there's always this moment where they're, they're ready to give up. Like, yeah, uh, it, it's it's too late. And then oh, there, there must yeah. be thousands of examples. And, the, and then suddenly they, they live after all. Yeah, that's one of the most overused cliches in the world, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we had we had a. Uh, Another list of overused cliches, uh, or, or cliches that we think are overused. Another one is the I trusted you scene. Uh, oh, yeah. The, especially by <coughs> us, very much loathed I trusted you scene in romantic movies or comedies. Uh, we're always pleased if they can avoid it. So what we mean by the I trusted you scene is that... Uh, there's some kind of ruse or something dishonest about what the yeah. main character's been doing. The main character usually lies yeah. uh, to the love interest. Yeah, and the love interest finds out, and then it's like, I trusted you, and... and Especially with these comedies where uh, there's um, they have to, for example... Um, court someone for a bet and then right uh they start liking them genuinely yeah but then they they fall in love actually, and then afterwards you have to admit that yeah actually i didn't i wasn't really into this, you at first this is of course bet. in the movie avatar and, and it's my least favorite moment in in the movie and and he I actually trusted you. i trusted you and then he <laughs> actually goes like look at first it was just a job but then i really fell in love with you know yeah. that's like oh man please yeah. come on this is so yeah it's cringy it's, it's good that the, the rest of the movie is so great yes <laughs> yeah otherwise it would be really annoying i i'm always glad if they can avoid it i was surprised for example in the the mirror has two faces when um uh, they meet each other through an ad, but one of the two doesn't know about it mm -hmm. because their sister actually yeah. uh, reacted to the ad. And then um, before her sister can blab about it, she she tells her that he already told her about the ad. So she can't, yeah. blab, she can't blab about it. And that's actually, yeah, I, that, that movie, The Mirror Has Two Faces, uh, with and by Barbara Streisand, I thought it was surprisingly good. It, I mean, it it was. Um, I I had expected the kind of run of the mill romantic comedy, but it but it was actually it was quite an, it had some quite insightful. Um, it was a movie with some psychological insight, um, even though it was just a you know a light hearted fun movie. Right. Oh, and and um, uh, often um, a result of that is the moping montage when they oh, yeah, kind the, of had yeah. a. They end up having a fight, and then usually after the "I trusted you" scene, he, if if it's a he, is is probably wandering around in a neon lit city, <laughs> yeah. uh, full of criminals or whatever. And then the female equivalent is eating ice cream when miserable or watching a silly romantic movie, sobbing. <laughs> with, uh, perhaps yeah, uh, this is very cliche. A box of tissues. Uh, the. Yeah, the Bridget Jones kind of way. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's that's probably the most cliche movie yeah. when it comes to that. Yeah, but they 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 kind of mock it a bit in yeah. Bridget Jones, I think. Um, yeah, the moping, and then they have like um, you know, like the the Alleluia song, you know, um, <laughs> like in Shrek. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, or oh, something like that. And another annoying cliche. Is at the end of the romantic comedy. They oh yeah, he has to chase his girlfriend at the airport before she leaves, and then he has to do this big speech and get on his knees, and 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 she she gets teary eyed, and and then everybody's clapping and they're reunited. And... Yeah, I I think what I find particularly annoying is the the airport bit. It's just pick another setting. We've had airports, so many airports. Maybe she doesn't take the plane. Maybe she takes the, the I don't know, the, the horse or something. <laughs> yeah, that could work, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe in something like McLeod's Daughters. <laughs> <laughs> and then he needs to find the right horse. <laughs> Which horse did she take? <laughs> <laughs> 
Another um, romantic comedy cliche is the girls trying on dresses montage. Oh, yeah, I hate it. Uh, often wedding dresses. Mm, yeah, oh, it's so sometimes. boring. Yeah, it's, it's boring. Uh, oh, there's also the cliche of some somebody who needs to say something important, but nobody listens. Oh, yeah. Oh. And it's really important. And like, they're like... No, but please just just listen and then no, they're like no no it's fine and yeah oh, that's so annoying or no I want to say something first oh, oh yeah that's yeah. another one oh yeah 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 oh, oh yeah or, or he wants to confess something or yeah. apologize but then he is or, or so he wants to say something like I I I want to stop doing this thing that we're doing uh, and then they're like I want to tell you something. Okay, but first I have to tell you something. I'm so happy that you're working with me and and blah blah blah. And so, and what was it that you wanted to say? And yeah, then, like, and then it oh, becomes oh, really hard to say. Yeah, it because, nothing. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fine. And, yeah. Oh, and and <laughs> for example, in in bed knobs in bed knobs and broomsticks, uh, the go the boy could have solved the entire mystery without the long cartoonish football scene. Because he kind of had the answer in his book and nobody wanted to listen to him. He was always like, right. but, 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 but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then afterwards they were like, oh, we could have just solved it from home without actually going there. That's. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always loved that movie as a kid. Um, I can see the narrative flaws in it, but I still really enjoy the, you know, the, the, the knight's armors uh, coming to life at the end and fighting off the Nazis. Yeah. I don't really know what the big deal is with the animation scene in between. I I don't think it really. I never actually. liked I never liked the the animation. I always just liked the the, the knights. I guess the idea of of you know knights with swords winning from guys with guns is something that I really like. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, often when uh, when uh, going back to the, the the funeral scene, very often if the character was murdered um, then um, then the the person who did it the is murderer? is at the funeral yeah and they often arrive in a limo <laughs> yeah that's also true yeah yeah the or maybe always... they're not actually at the funeral but they're like watching the funeral from from, from a their distance. from their yeah, limo right from a <laughs> from, distance from a dark window or yeah. true 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 and and the murder always uh, returns to the crime scene so if there is a crime yeah, scene and there's yeah. cops around then he will probably he'll probably go what's going on on here <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what other uh, cliches do we have of yeah comedy is full of misunderstandings and people jumping to conclusions yeah. Um, yeah, you could go on for ages about that. Oh, the the idol turns out to be an idiot or or an asshole. Oh yeah, that that's it that's used to be a original, but now it's somewhat overused. Especially Pixar, kind of with, with Up and Coco and uh, oh, and and uh, 102 Dalmatians has it too. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's a Disney thing. Like someone idolizes someone, and then they, when they actually meet him, it turns out that this. This person is an yeah. idiot, or 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 even a bad person. Uh, yeah, or at least not not a big deal. Yeah, no no hero at least. Yeah, hmm. I've experienced that in real life. You have? Yeah, there was this great writer who wrote The Will of the Woods, and then when I met him, he was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> he was this total idiot. Uh, but yeah. I married him anyway. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Another another very annoying cliche uh, a recent one uh, that's that's also become a bit of a hype there was no prophecy it was you all along which kind of started with the lego movie or what was i it? hate that <laughs> you hate it yeah didn't you read a book well, I read... Oh, you can't you can't say because yeah, it would no, be a spoiler, I, I won't right? mention it but but there uh, was a book series that i was reading uh, i'm still reading it uh, i really enjoyed it but there was it was it was super actually it was great but there was this moment um in one of the books where there was something like that where it was thought that the main character was this prophesied hero and then it turns out no there was no real prophecy and all the amazing stuff you did you just did because because you people, believed it because people believed in you and you believed in yeah. yourself and you're such a testament to the power of human belief and 
And you can do anything if you just... Because really... It, you need a training <laughs> montage or you will not be a hero. No, because... No, but really, come on. It, we want heroes. We want prophecies. No, that's why we read fantasy. And you're, you, you're not going to suddenly, you know, take that away from us in uh, after hundreds of pages and act like... Ooh, ho, oh, su such an amazing reveal. No, it's just annoying. It just makes the world less magical. But I think you were not the only one being annoyed by it because you told me that in the next book he tries to fix it, right? The writer? Well, it seems like, uh, yeah, it seems like he's fixing it in the next book. Oh, no, one. you were the prophesied Somewhere. hero anyway. I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's still unclear at this moment, yeah. but okay. um, at least the other characters are also uh, annoyed by it. I'm reading a fantasy book. I want this to be, you know, epic and magical. And that's what the book uh, tries to provide. And then why would you suddenly undermine that and, and subvert it and say, oh, no, it wasn't magical or fantastic after all. It was it was just really ordinary and, and mundane. And, and, and then suddenly that's a testament to the power of human whatever. That's <laughs> bullshit. You know, don't don't give me that crap. Well, it might turn out um, nice in the end. You can sure. I mean, it's it's. I mean, still a great series with a great plot and, and great characters and a great setting. You can um, finish it once we have finished uh, our big epic treasure hunt. In yes. The Witch Hunter well, well, I promise you, we will never do anything like that. We will never do like like someone's like like setting up something mysterious and magical and then reveal. Oh no! It was actually just mundane. Oh, that after is actually all. a big cliche. It's like the, the Scooby Doo cliche in treasure hunt movies is that the real treasure is friendship yeah. or something. Yeah, that's another one of those. Uh, like pulling out the rug from under your feet and uh, saying, you know, this, this whole build up, this fantastic stuff that you were looking forward to, it's actually nothing. After a treasure hunt with puzzles, you want gold, damn it! You yeah. don't want a, a note that says friendship is the real treasure. Yeah. You want gold. And just like that's why. Why I hate Scooby Doo because at the end there, there's never a real ghost or monster. It's always some stupid idiot with a mask. Yeah. That's that annoys me so much. That I, I mean, give me give me ghosts and monsters. That's why I watch this kind of stuff. It strikes me that there's a lot of children's books like that, where they talk about ghosts and stuff, and it's always. Um... It's always a joke, a practical joke by someone. It's it's never oh never real. yeah, that's another cliche that I want to mention. Um, that's in in ki in kids uh, TV shows and stuff a lot. It's this whole stupid notion of ghosts don't exist, hmm. um, and you know usually the characters saying that are I don't know talking donkeys or leprechauns. Or uh, Wolves, yeah, or dogs, self self conscious what? droids or whatever you know. Anyway, things that don't exist, <laughs> that really don't exist. Saying that ghosts, which might exist, don't exist. You know, that's it's stupid. Uh, it's, maybe it annoys it's, me. Maybe it's more like a running gag. Maybe it's like uh, meant as a joke or something, because they're aware of it. The the creators. That a talking dog saying that ghosts don't exist is kind of funny, right? I find it much more believable that ghosts exist than that talking dogs exist in any case. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting point of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Uh, another cliche, yeah. Knock someone unconscious with a small blow to the head. Yes. It's like, it always works. Yeah, why does it work? You just have to knock someone on the head, and they're always unconscious for a for, long for time. A lim yeah, for just uh, exactly the amount of time oh, yeah. that they need to be for right. the plot, yeah. and there's never any permanent damage. Yeah, like in, in Demolition Man. You, you even do it as a favor. Just knock yeah. someone unconscious for a bit, then he can just... Yeah. But at least in, in that in. movie, he did it with this device that was specifically made for that purpose. Yeah, okay. Uh, but in, in most movies, it's like with a frying pan or something. Or you know. maybe with a, a some kind of karate slap yeah. that's yeah. exactly pointed at the right direction. Uh, yeah. some, some place in the neck where you can... Yeah, the knocking unconscious. Um, but it, it doesn't bother me because it, it's, it's, a, it's a very handy plot device. Um, 
and is, I've used it myself. It is. Uh, it is. We are not um, saints when it comes to that. We we we've used it. We will use it. We will. I mean, it, yeah. it's super convenient, and it's sort of it's it's so standard at this point that nobody is bothered by it anymore. But no. in reality, you couldn't just do that. You couldn't just you know hit someone. Um, with a board on the back of their head and just think, oh, they'll be out for 15 minutes and now we can escape and then they'll be, well, they'll wake up, you know. Uh, Maybe they'll invent a device like that, where <laughs> that which has a small wheel that you turn and then you can like set it to 15 minutes and then <laughs> hit someone and then he actually is unconscious for 15 minutes. Like You could do that in a sci-fi, yeah. But I, I guess in, in Star Trek, they have these phasers uh, that they, you can set for stun, right? Okay, uh, let's talk about sounds for a bit. Okay. Cliches and sounds, like um, the drawing of the sword sound. A, it is a drawing of a sword. <laughs> <laughs> drawing, drawing a sword sound. Um, yeah. I'm not drinking alcohol, I'm drinking tea. Yeah, it's, me too. It's licorice it's tea. It's throat comfort tea, mm. and it has a label, and the label says... Oh, I thought it was licorice. But there's licorice. There's licorice in it, yeah. The, the label says, mine says, we pay more attention to gossip than to gospels. Mm. Mine says, we should be strong and true. Mm. Also very, very true, yeah. So, um, going back. Oh, yeah. So, the sound of a sword being drawn. Mm -hmm. Shing! Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, if and you've actually done any sword fighting, you know it doesn't sound like that. it. It's actually it actually sounds very boring. It's like very very boring. Yeah. Um, I once downloaded a medieval weapons sound effects collection, and I thought, oh, this is gonna be great. I can use this so much in our audio drama. Ended up not using any one of the sounds. Because they were all real sounds of medieval weapons, and they sounded unbelievably dull and no impact, and you know it was completely unusable. Hmm. Yeah, you, maybe if you if you have to do a voiceover a voiceover for a documentary or something, you can still use. It. I mean, you, <laughs> if you, they want that, it turns out that. it turns out that what you need is 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 the exaggerated Hollywood sounds. Yeah. And not the real sounds because they they're kind of like wait this is a sword fight it's like tuk, 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 tuk. even in a documentary they probably wouldn't use it okay so anyway yeah. um, uh, we have chirping birds when it's morning no of course that that, that is realistic um, yeah but you know if you wanna make clear that it's morning. You use chirping. Oh, uh, I think another sound effect uh, that is very typical even when you in, don't see in in movies outside. is um, like spy movies. Um, you have like these little letters that appear on the bottom of the screen that tell you where we are and what time it is. Like oh, yeah, yeah, they make sounds. <laughs> yeah, they make sounds. Yeah. It's often that we were watching a movie that you say like, oh, I have that sound effect. Or, oh, that's oh, yeah. the sound effect they used in that other movie. Oh, yeah. Some sound effects are really uh, very popular and overused, yeah. Like uh, a rooster. It's very often the same rooster that you hear. <laughs> no, uh, but, but, but I, I don't mind the cliche sound effects. Uh, I enjoy them. And, of course, the, the drawing effective. of the sword is one of the... Yeah, if it's effective, yeah. I, I don't mind either. This is a, and this is a, a well-known one. Eagles, you know, in movies they always make a certain sound that you know, yeah, that <laughs> okay, sounds that more like a dolphin. But yeah. yeah, but you know the typical eagle sound. But apparently, that typical eagle sound that they always use in movies is not the sound of an eagle, but uh, some other bird. I thought it was a hawk or something. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Apparently, that's um, it's one of those things. That we've gotten used. Oh, and uh, fist fights. Oh yeah. They always uh, apparently they what they do is they have uh, gymnasts who um, jump on these these mats, and um, oh really? That's yeah. And that's the sound you hear. That's that's how when they, a fist hits your yeah, cheek like, or something. Yeah, when in a fist fight in movies, you, you always hear like, 
And that's not what you would really hear. No, no I figured, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we've gotten so used to it that that's what we assume it sounds like. But in reality, it doesn't make much of a sound, apparently. I just noticed that you have your sock inside out. You're wearing your sock inside out. It's a statement. Really? It's a political statement. <laughs> Mm. It means that I support um, the inside out part. The, yeah, the yeah, no, it, no, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> it just means you were probably tired this morning. So anyway, uh, we've run out of cliches. I'm sure there are a thousand others that we failed to mention. Yeah, and actually, I'm quite curious about what uh, strikes you as a cliché. Um, so, if you have any more examples of clichés, uh, we would really, really love to read about them in the comment section. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure that Witch Hunter and the Will of the Woods are, are, have their own uh, clichés. Um, yeah. So there are lots of them. We don't hate um, them. They're no, I, in quite general, I like, I like them. Effective, uh, if they're not really overused. Yeah, it, yeah. It just, it, I guess it just sort of depends. Um, there are there are charming cliches and there are annoying cliches. So and it also depends me. on the execution because you yes. can do them well and you can yes. really make them suck. Yes, yes, it's true. Uh, but that goes for everything. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear more more examples of cliches and what you think of them and whether you find them funny because many of them are funny you know like the walking away from an explosion and things like that um they're, they're cool and, and funny uh so yeah we hope you had fun and uh, we'll talk to you next time on the audio epics podcast bye bye bye